Hi everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we are making cinnamon rolls. Finally, I have been telling you for a while I want to share what I've been doing for sourdough cinnamon rolls. Now, it is really important for me to find recipes that are easy. So in that sense, I like to just have a base recipe and twist it, turn it, come up with ways to make it something else. So I'm actually using my soft sourdough bread recipe and then I've tweaked a few things and boom, we've got cinnamon rolls. I'll be sure to link that sourdough bread recipe if you haven't seen it before because I think it is really a great base for soft bread. I will leave the exact recipe in the description below, but most things are the same as my bread. Some warm water, 350 grams, seven grams of salt. I'm just using pink Himalayan salt because that's what I have. 400 grams of sourdough sourdough starter so I use this crock to keep mine and if you haven't made sourdough starter before I'll be sure to link that video as well in the description it's pretty simple to do and it tastes so good All right, here is where I switch it up. Now, we all know cinnamon rolls are more of a sweeter dough than bread, so I am adding more honey to my rolls so that they're sweeter. So I'm actually just tripling the sugar amount for my dough. Now I've been trying to replace a lot of things that I would use sugar with, with honey instead because we have it. Our honey solidified this year, um, but it's really great for baking. So I'm going to use 42 grams of honey, which is quite a bit. Oop, or 48. The next change to this recipe is I am going to be adding more fat, or in this case, butter. So typically I add, my recipe actually says a tablespoon of butter, but typically when I'm making my bread, I add closer to two or three tablespoons. So I'm going to add a full four tablespoons to my sourdough cinnamon roll dough. And since I'm adding more fat, it's going to make the dough itself softer. All right, I'm going to add that melted butter. I just melt it right on the stove top. And then we're going to start mixing it in the mixer with our dough hook. Now you can certainly mix this by hand, and I have done that, but I find the dough is much softer if I do it this way. All right, I mixed it up a little bit just because I didn't want my butter to ruin my um, yeast, my sourdough there. But I'm going to add my flour. It's 800 grams, and if you're wondering where I'm getting these grams numbers, because I get that a lot, I use my scale. Um, I just find that it's more accurate. And most weighted recipes are in grams. Put this back under the dough hook. You guys know I don't time this, but about 10 minutes maybe. While my dough is mixing up, I am going to mix the filling. Now, I'm going to be making cinnamon rolls, but if you like caramel pecan rolls, they are just as easy to make. So I use the same ingredients, butter and brown sugar, I do use sugar in this, and cinnamon, only I add pecans. Now, I like the inside to be rather thick, so that means more of the sugar and cinnamon less of the butter, I don't measure. So then if I'm making caramel pecan rolls, I'll put that more liquidy with the butter on the bottom, and I actually cook my caramel pecan rolls that way and flip them out to serve. But we're making cinnamon rolls today, so this is going to be a little thicker and just the inside, and then tomorrow morning I'll make frosting when it's time to eat them. All right, so the first thing I'm going to add is the butter. I'm just using a little bit over a stick, uh, but about a stick. 
Again, I don't usually measure it. I usually just go by the texture of what it looks like. I'm gonna melt that a little bit and I'll get my cinnamon and sugar out and ready. Now, while that butter is melting, I'm gonna be adding the cinnamon and sugar. I would love to try this with honey, but I haven't dared that yet, just the dough. So I am going to use quite a bit of sugar. I'll use a measuring cup just for your sake of seeing about how much I end up adding. So a quarter cup. And this one I want a little bit thicker, more on the sugary side than the butter. Let's start with three quarters cup and see how that does. And then cinnamon, probably an eighth a cup, which is the same as two tablespoons. The butter's still melting, but you can see it's going to be far runnier, more on the buttery side than the sugar side. This would be perfect for the bottom of your caramel pecan rolls, which would end up being the top. Note to self, if you're making caramel pecan rolls, you don't need to butter your pan. You would just dump that mixture in the bottom, add some pecans to it, dump it in the bottom, and then make your rolls, and when you're ready to serve them, flip them over. So I'm gonna add another half a cup of brown sugar because I want this to be more on the sugary side than the buttery side. Now that everything is melted and mixed in, I'm gonna set this inside mixture aside so that I can um, let it cool a little bit because it's easier to spread if it isn't so runny. Otherwise, it's just gonna run right off my dough. Now, I have put it in the fridge, and if you do that for a little bit, it works well, but honestly, just setting it away from the heat can work great too. All right, my dough has been running for 10 minutes or so. I don't know exactly, but I'm just to the top here, so it just fits in my mixer. So I'm going to clean this out. Now in the past, I used to always roll up my cinnamon rolls by shaking some flour on the counter and then rolling them out and that works great. But I found if I have a little bit more time on my hands, a little bit more patience, I can use my dough scraper to just get it off the counter. And if it's sticking to my hands at all, I can add just a little bit of butter or oil. So you can see all that fat in here makes this dough so much softer than typical bread dough. I'm going to use my rolling pin to make a rectangle out of my dough. Sometimes I'll make two. Um, that's a little bit easier, but I'm just going to make one today. I just love working with this dough. My rectangle isn't perfect, but I would say it's about two feet by one foot, just to kind of give you an idea of how big I'm making it. Now it's time to add my filling. We have that butter, sugar, brown sugar, cinnamon mixture, and we're gonna put it on. I made sure it's a little bit more solidified. You can see there's a little bit of butter on here that would run all over if I'm not careful, but this should hold up pretty good. So I'm going to try to get it mostly in the center, but I'm spreading it out a little bit just to make it easier on myself. Now I'm gonna just spread this out. The quicker the better because it's going to start hardening fast. I like to have this on most of my roll. So I'm gonna get close to the edge, but not all the way up to it. Now, here comes the putsy part. If I didn't flour my counter, I have to get this rolled up. So I just use my little scraper to kind of loosen one of the sides and start rolling it. I got a little close here. You can see that back there. So no matter what I do when I roll it up, this is probably going to come out a little bit. The thing about cinnamon rolls is they taste great even if they're messy, but it is easier to make when they aren't messy. So I'll just try to tuck that in a little bit, but it will probably sneak out. All right, so I'm trying to kind of push it together so these don't get so stretched out and small. 
and then I'm going to cut it. Now I'm not super stuck on how many cinnamon rolls it's going to be so I usually just cut in half, keep cutting in half till I like the size and generally it tends to be about 14 to 18 cinnamon rolls when I do this. Be about 16. All right, I'm going to load up my pan and I'm going to tell you these aren't all going to fit in my pan. What I really like about this recipe is. It makes so many cinnamon rolls. Look at this is the end piece and it looks so good. It makes so many cinnamon rolls that I can make a couple pans, which is nice because I can throw one in the freezer or I can gift one to someone. It's just really nice and handy to be able to have all that made in one easy sitting. If you like them super round, you can certainly form them how you'd like them or flatten them a little. I always make these the night before. It's just super simple for me. I have made them in the morning for the evening and that worked fine as well. But I just find I always have more time in the evening to do a special project like this. So I'm gonna turn my oven on to 350 and let it warm up a little bit. Once it's warm, I'm going to turn my oven off. We're gonna put these inside and I'm gonna let them raise overnight. My oven will be turned off, so don't leave that on overnight. Um, but just enough to have a nice warm environment for them to raise. All right, I'm going to cover them with just a damp uh, white dish towel when they go in the oven. This is going to keep them from drying out on top. If your house is warm, sometimes you can turn on the light in your oven and that's enough for them to rise. I just find that it helps if I preheat it, warm it up a little bit first, and then they should be good. So I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Good morning! So let's check on those cinnamon rolls. I'm going to preheat my oven to 400 degrees and show you what they look like. They filled up that pan perfectly. So I'm going to be sure to set them away from the heat. Keep them covered so they don't dry out now after keeping them moist all night. All right, so as I'm getting ready to make my frosting, cook it again, there you go. I'm getting ready to make the frosting. I'm going to make a cream cheese frosting. And I usually use powdered sugar for this, but I open my cupboard and realize that I'm completely out of powdered sugar. So this has happened before, and I know if I run out of powdered sugar, I can make some with just regular sugar. So to do that, um, I'll put a link above if you wanna try and do that. It's super simple, um, but I keep telling you guys I'm trying more and more often to use honey for sweetener, so what better time to try than now? So we're gonna see how this turns out. I'm gonna use honey, cream cheese, butter, and vanilla. I'm going to use four ounces of cream cheese, which is half of a package for my frosting. And then as soon as that butter's soft, one stick of butter, about a teaspoon or, or, or more of vanilla. And we're going to use the whisk to whip this up. Now, normally I use two cups of powdered sugar. So if you're using powdered sugar, two cups. And I think this is going to have probably a different color texture and such and I don't really intend to use a full two cups of the sugar but we'll see with the butter kind of how it turns out. Don't be afraid to try new things in your cooking and baking. You never know what you're going to come up with. mixing up really well still waiting on that butter it looks good you can see a couple of little crystallized chunks of honey in here 
It might not end up being super smooth because of that, but I'm going to turn this back on. I can always add more honey, but I'm going to let it mix a little bit, hopefully break up some of those chunks. All right, I think our butter is soft enough. So we're going to toss it in and let it mix. All right, so I added that stick of butter and we will see how it looks, how it tastes, see if we need any more honey. Okay, so it broke up most of those little chunks of honey, but there's still a little bit. Oh my goodness. I probably in comparison have a quarter amount of the honey as I would sugar and it's far sweeter and then it has that nice butter taste too. But I think it's perfect. So I probably added maybe half a cup of honey. Um, so if you want to try it that way, I would say it definitely turned and out. And I am going to be putting my cinnamon rolls in the oven. Now, typically I make my bread for 30 minutes and since I'm still new to the cinnamon roll recipe, I've only been using it a couple months. I I knew it had to have gone off or would soon. I've only been using this recipe a couple months. I'm still just at the stages where I check and kind of wait and see when it's done. Um, but I'll tell you how long it took today. Actually, let's see. Now I haven't tried freezing the dough in this state yet after it rises freezing it to bake it, um, but I probably will try that in the future. I have frozen these when they're done. Sometimes I'll frost them first, sometimes I'll set the frosting aside and then frost them after I heat them up. Um, it just depends on how I'm likely going to use them. So we're going to let these bake. It's 8.32. I'll let you know when they're done. I have to show you the texture of this because it is just going to be the perfect frosting. I'm so glad we tried it. Good thing we were out of powdered sugar. So it's been 15 minutes. We're at 847. So I'm just going to check on these. I think they're going to need, oh, forgot this was a little pan. I think they're going to need a little bit longer. A little bit, not actually too much. So maybe five more minutes. Set a timer for five minutes. My timer went off for five minutes. So let's check this big pan this time. Ooh, I think they're going to be good. I'm gonna just check them in to be sure. Oh yeah, they look so good. All right, they look great. I'll get that other pan out. We're gonna let them cool down a little bit. It's almost nine o'clock here. So my kids are anxious to eat. They're home from school today, so everybody kind of slept in and we're having a slower morning. But I'm sure they're still anxious to eat these, especially with how good they smell. So we'll let them cool down a little bit and then we'll frost them and serve them up. 